Hello, people from YouTube. Welcome back to Beacon Pines. Uh, honestly, I don't know what episode we're on by the time I'm making this. In the last episode of Beacon Pines for YouTube, crazy shit happened to where one of Grand's fucking disciples, I don't know what the fuck I call them, accomplices, there you go. One of her accomplices came out of nowhere to the basement and Rolo fucking tackled his ass, knocking him out. So now we are going to interrogate the fucker. In other words, Detective Cyclone is back on the case. Let's go. Let me do something real quick. It's so goddamn dark in here. All right. I'm set. I'm ready. I'm single. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need Jesus in my life. Get into it. All right, chapter seven. The interrogation of Hiram Tolliver. We're gonna okay, Rollo. This is the plan. Um, um. Fuck if I know. Just punch him. Still unconscious, Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. Okay. His hands were bound with rope. His feet tied with some loose string. Was this all in the basement? The kids huddled in a circle, discussing their plan. One thing was certain. They couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. <laughs> Fuck, actually, yeah, we can't let him go. Because if we do, then he's just going to let Gran know. And then the whole fuck... Yeah, no, we are fucked, actually, in this case. They needed to know what he was doing in Luca's house. Yeah, it would be good to know. Wait, y'all tied his hands, right? Because on there, it doesn't look like his hands are tied. After some deliberation, it was decided. What the fuck did we decide on? They run the classic good cop. Ch no! <laughs> God damn it! It's supposed to be bad cop. They'd run the classic good cop, chill, chill cop, cop interrogation. interrogation. <sighs> okay, look, boys and girl, I'll handle this. Walked calmly to the light switch, mm. flicking it off and on a few times. <laughs> ah, that's fine. Oh, okay, he shows it. Mr. <laughs> Tolliver shook his head, gathering his wits. Go <laughs> oh, sugar my belly run. What the fuck happened to me? What the fuck am I doing? Over to find Luca, who returned a calming grin. Sorry, Mr. Tolliver. This was all a big mistake. Luca, what go on here? Why oh, do you have my strip then? Why you be stuck down? What the fuck? Man, no one's fault, really. Roto just got a little startled, if you know what I mean. You gotta respect the Don. <laughs> just, just make him. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. We're gonna make him like a mafia guy. Roto's here. Rolo and Beck emerged from hiding to give a timid wave. Sup. Oh, oh, all right. Mistakes happen. Oh, you kids gave old Harem a good scare. <laughs> yeah. oh, let, let, let's just get me out of these ropes and, uh, you know, call it even. <laughs> Luca glanced over to Rollo and Beck, who replied with skeptical looks. Ah, oh, Mr. Tolliver. Why are you in my grand's basement? Uh, I'm here to help, of course. Uh, help with what? What's my gran up to? Oh, you just cut me loose, I can show you. Hmm. How do I know we can trust you? With the Don! No, Mr. Tolliver exhaled with disappointment. <gasps> Luca, have I ever done wrong by you? Yes. I don't know what it is, but I'm sure it's a yes. No. Fuck! That's your grand move to town. Haven't I been nothing but welcoming? Yeah. Why would I turn my back on your family? No. It's just... All this stuff seems pretty fucking weird if you ask me. A board with names of people from town. An archive of my dad's old disturbing patient notes. Luca gestured to the corner. Barrels of explosives. I can explain everything. Do this need to a dummy. Come on, do it, do it now, do it. Who kids deserve an explanation? Luca looked again to Rollo and Beck. 
I feel like I'm gonna have to use the Chronicle here because he's gonna be all bad and shit. And then we're gonna hop back in it. That's what I'm assuming. This time they shrugged. Oh. Luca began to slowly loosen the bindings. Oh fuck. Mr. Tolliver gently rubbed his wrists. That's a good lad. That all makes sense in time. It all makes sense in time. Dude, if he punches me. He edged imperceptibly toward the stairs as he spoke. Yeah, no shit. See, this town has secrets, Luca. Very dark past indeed. I mean, wait. Well, well are you just talking about the foul harvest? Or are you talking about more? <gasps> Actually, that pro was the main Valentine guy murdered. Before the kids had even noticed his movement, Mr. Tolliver was at the light switch. Ah, oh, fuck. A pass that must be brought to. He punctuated his final words by flicking the switch and rushing up the stairs. Light! Ah! Son of a! Darted to the wall and turned back on the lights. It was too late. Rolo confirmed what they all heard. Yeah. He just. He just locked us down here! That son of a bitch! Mr. Tolliver's muffled voice came from <laughs> the start making him cuss now. I want to lie to you now. This is for your own good. You kids just keep tight down there. And let the adults handle this. They looked bewildered at each other. Okay. Wait, so he just locked us down there for the better good. Well, wait, y'all have to come back down for the explosives, don't y'all? Play it cool, huh? Not now, Beck. They heard the staccato thump of quick steps exiting the house. Oh, fuck. The kids looked down in resignation. This isn't how it goes in Hank Atomic. For some reason, they'd always assumed it was up to them to save their town. Luca opened his mouth, hoping to conjure some magical words to make this right. Only a hollow croak escaped. The end. <laughs> Well, we certainly aren't going to find a grand resolution to our tale locked in a basement. True. Back to the drawing board. This one still needs to be done, and then this one needs to be Because I think every other one I've done. Yeah. So, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go back to this timeline, back where uh, Iggy wanted to pick fights with Luca. But in this situation, we're going to go with Tickle, not... Uh, well, time to bust out the tickles. Well, time to bust out the tickles. Hey, Tish, want to see something cool? Uh! Check. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tish's arms. Hey, oh, 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 oh. Yo, what the? Tish, is she tickling you? <laughs> Tears began to form in Tish's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of laughter. <laughs> redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. <laughs> what just happened? Ah, oh, she seems nice. Sorry for the interruption. I think you were just threatening us. Iggy's eyes darted around. A realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. Oh. Oh. I was wondering why the fuck that would have been an option anyways. I just remember. I, I have somewhere to go. Or somewhere to be. Mm-hmm. See you around, new kid. <laughs> at the puddle before making his escape. Oh. <gasps> Fuck! This is bad. What a little creep. Uh... Beck, I, I think you got a little ooze in your hair. Shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. Is it bad? Uh, it, it, it depends what your feelings about having a more mature, refined look. Oh god. Uh. Chapter 4 The Best Policy 
Luca okay. paused for a moment, catching his breath. So we're back in the original timeline for me. Or the original timeline I was going down, where uh, I was able to get Lolo with me, and now he's still missing, and Beck got fucked a little bit. He'd only just met Beck, and somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Yeah. Hopefully he could make it up to her. But no. finding Rolo was his primary concern. Yeah. yeah. I want to walk in it. Damn it. <laughs> oh, shit. Luca, what the hell are you doing out here? And why did a kid with gray hair just run past us in a panic? Roxy and Fitz looked drained. Uh, pussies. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. Fuck. That's Beck. I don't care who she is. What happened? Look, we were just helping look for Lolo. Luca, I need you to start telling me the truth. Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling. But this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. Yeah, she's pissed. We're running out of time! In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Lolo and I weren't just playing in Reap Woods yesterday. We were investigating lights at the old Valentine warehouse. But someone was there in a strange suit. And we hid in the dumpster and had a heavy bag dropped on us. And I think it was a body. And so we ran, but we got split up. And I ran home. And it's all my fault! And now my best friend may never come back! Well... It well. Roxy, still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground and thought. With a determined sigh, she looked up at Luca. It's not your fault, Luca. Rolo's gonna be okay, I promise. Roxy drew herself up. I'm gonna fix this. Luca, go home. But I wanna help. This is too dangerous for a kid. I can't just sit around and have- I have to do something, God! Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. <sighs> you go back to that little treehouse you two like to play in. Wait there in case Rolo shows up. Sounds like a plan? Luca wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. <laughs> you did the right thing telling me the truth. Now scoot. Do you believe his story? What other options do we have? Things have been strange around here leading up to the festival. My dad has been getting me weird lately. Well, weirder than normal. Looking into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Why is it so cold here? It may give me the willies. We're here at the treehouse for Rolo shows up. Alright. Mr. Nuncree jumped with a start. <laughs> well, no snig up on an old fella like that, you lipper snapper. Mm. Yeah. Sorry. Who are you talking to? Mom. Luca motioned to the phone booth. Oh, no. Um, uh, uh, I was just checking because I thought I heard it ring. Uh, yeah. But the day day never does, of course. Mm, um, yeah. Yeah, I've never seen anyone use it really. No thing's a waste of money, if you ask me. Mm, yeah. Anywhere from Rollo yet? Mm, yeah. Eh, uh, not yet. Long time for a boy to lose his way. Mm, yeah. Rolo knows those words too well to get lost. I suppose you're right. Mm, yeah. Chili boy ain't except this whole town boy with chick. Mm, yeah. Antics? We all know Rolo likes to play his little pranks. 
You think this is a prank? What other possible explanation could there be? He's not playing a prank, and he didn't get lost. Someone took him. I know it. How would you know that? Unless... Because there's something else that you know. Yeah. Mr. Nuncree gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Dang it, boy, there's something you know. Something that could help your friend you need to tell folks. Um. You just said it's a prank. Luca peered up at Mr. Nuncreed. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. There was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. It was subtle, but Luca could sense something eating away at him. Huh. This is a new one. Shame looking behind those eyes? There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. A deep sadness. If Mr. Nuncrete was that worried about Rolo, maybe he could help. I don't know. Yesterday, Rolo and I were messing around at the old Valentine warehouse. Mr. Nuncrete raised an eyebrow. Mm. Both of you? You were with Rolo when he w went missing? N not exactly. I, I was hiding in the dumpster. The dumpster? Hmm. What were you doing in there? At first, we were just looking around. Then someone in a strange yellow suit came and dumped something on us. We both got scared and ran. That was the last I saw of him. You got scared of some garbage? Mm, yeah. Well, that's why you don't go sulking in someone's dumpster. Mm, yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't garbage. I, I think... I think it was a body. I'm sure it was just someone's trash. Yeah. No, there was a name tag. It said Deep Engineering. Mr. Nuncrete's shoulders slumped. I wish you wouldn't have said that. Knew it! A deep sigh bellowed from his chest. Uh, what did you have to... I tried, Luca. God knows I try to keep you safe. Yeah. Luca attempted to take a step back, but Nuncrete's hand clamped down on his shoulder. But you Van Horns just can't help yourselves, can you? Oh, he's getting intense. We're all so close, so close to being done with this. With a firm shove, Nuncrete manhandled Luca into the phone booth. What are you doing? It's out of my hands now. The door latched shut with a mechanical hiss. The fuck? Hmm. Shit. As Luca pounded the glass, the floor dropped from under his feet. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule plummeting at gravity's whim. Luca winced and pressed his hands to the walls. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. He felt a cold rush of air, and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He knows too much. The end. Wait. No. This isn't the end. I know there's still much more. Somehow this went wrong. Okay, let's try something else. Well, that sucked. 